Okay. So, so today we are going to talk about uh, forms. Okay. Forms are very important for our web application, so it will take the whole three hours lecture. Uh, before going to details, uh, I want to. I would like to remind you uh, that uh, everything has been updated on the course website. Okay, so if you look at the detailed schedule, you see that uh, apart from today's lecture, okay, next week there will be two labs, uh, Monday and Tuesday, okay. And we will have lecture again next week uh, on Thursday, okay? And uh, I will publish the slides uh, in advance as usual, okay? So basically next week, Monday and Tuesday, you will apply all what you learn, uh, learned uh, on Monday about the state and today about the forms, uh, which also deals with the state, okay? So we, you have two labs to experiment with this uh, stuff. Uh, okay, uh, so I think we can start and discussing the forms, okay? So forms are very important because uh, they are the way in which users input data into the web application, okay? Because the only other way is basically have a, a non-textual input, so it means uh, moving the mouse, clicking, double clicking, and stuff like that, okay? When you need to input data, which is not of this kind, um, you need to have a forms. That means, uh, basically, in the most simple, uh, most simple example, uh, places where you can type text, okay? Very simple idea about uh, forms. Um, we already saw forms uh, and we, we've seen some texts uh, that are available in HTML to, uh, to create forms into a web page. And uh, actually, I mean, the, the principle here is exactly the same. We just need to understand how to handle them with React. Okay? Forms are present in HTML since the first version of HTML, so it's nothing new here. So it's been more than 30 years that uh, forms are available in HTML. But typically they were handled in a very, very different way. So it means the user typed the stuff, inputted the, in, uh, the user put uh, its input into, into the forms. And then the browser packages all the content of these forms, send it to the server, the server process the, the content in some ways and gives you an answer, a new page. But remember here we are dealing with single page applications, so this model of handling forms uh, doesn't work anymore. So we will use forms only as places where the user can input some textual data, okay? And uh, now we'll try to understand how to do them in the, be in the best way with React, okay? Also, React helps us in another way because the original HTML forms are quite inconsistent. That means that, uh, uh, let's say, they, they, they grew up in, in, a, in a not so ordered way. So it means that, uh, for instance, if you take some uh, um, elements like the text area, a box, a big box where you can input multi-line text, uh, Things uh, works a little bit different from input texts uh, where uh, you have only one line, for instance. So there are different attributes depending on the HTML form that you are using, or different behaviors of the event handler depending on the form control that you're using. Like radio buttons behave differently from uh, buttons, normal buttons, and so on, okay? And so, putting an intermediate layer between uh, the uh, actual HTML forms available in HTML, in the DOM, and what we see in our application by means of React, help us to flatten this uh, inconsistent behavior, okay? So the JSX exposes uh, 
uh, a, a more uniform way of dealing with forms. So, for instance, uh, the value attribute of each element in the JSX forms uh, always contains the actual value of the element, regardless of which uh, HTML control we are using. Okay? And also events. All events work exactly in the same way. Okay? We will use a lot this on change event uh, because uh, uh, we need to be notified in React when uh, something has changed in one of the uh, inputs of the form. Okay? But we will discuss it uh, a bit more uh, in a minute. Okay? So, of course, we are programming in React, so we need to design the form. So writing the text of the form in JSX uh, syntax, okay? That is the way uh, that we used to uh, design HTML elements until now inside components, right? So we have uh, the form tag, we have the input tag, we have the uh, text area tag, we have the option tag, all the traditional tags of uh, HTML forms e are available in uh, JSX, okay? Just that, that, that their behavior has been slightly modified when needed to make uh, the behavior uniform across all HTML form uh, elements. Okay? So the value attribute always holds the current value of the field. And also there's another attribute very useful. The default value holds the default value that was set when the field was created. Sometimes you want to show something already present in your form when you show it for the first time. That's the default value. And then you can change it, okay? So it's just a proposal of what is written inside the form. Like you are editing something, you would like to have all the forms pre-filled with the information that is already available in the application when you are editing something. If you are creating something from scratch, maybe you want to have, to have uh, the, um, everything empty, okay? But if you are editing, you would like to have uh, the, the, the previous content available in the form. That's the purpose of the default value attribute, okay? And this applies to all form controls. So, uh, I mean, regardless of the type, okay? And this is a great advantage of using this uh, uh, system for us, okay? And also, as I was saying before, we have a very, very consistent on-change event. That means that uh, uh, basically if you write an event handler and you assign it to the on-change event on forms in React, you will always be called every time a single, uh, each single value changes. Okay? So it means uh, that uh, even when you type a single character or delete a single character in an, a textual input form or text area or whatever, you will be called, okay? So your handler will be called. And this will be very important for us because we would like to keep this information in another place, not just inside the HTML uh, element of the DOM, okay? So in short, in a state, as we will see uh, shortly. Uh, and this uh, uh, event works uh, consistently across the fields, even the radio buttons, which are basically a selection, which are mutually exclusive, so you can select just one out of the many that are available, or the selection force, where you can have multiple selections and so on. So every time you change something, the on-change event um, is, uh, is fired. So your handler is called, okay? So very useful and we will use it a lot. Uh, we already saw what, I what is an event handler. Uh, an uh, event handler is basically uh, a, a, a function that we write that can do something knowing what has happened through an event object, okay? This event object. And all event objects have a standard set of properties. So it means they are JavaScript objects, as usual, 
and they have a, a predefined set of properties that we can use. Okay? And we already saw the event target, okay? which is actually, remember, it was not a target, but the source of the event. So it is a reference to the element that has created the event, that has fired the event. And some events, depending on the type of event, okay, has more specific properties. Like uh, if you click, uh, there are the coordinates where the, the click has happened, the coordinates in the window, browser window, or maybe, um, you know, depending on the event, uh, there can be other options, other properties available, okay? And React basically copies uh, this structure, which is uh, uh, available in the DOM, and recreates everything uh, in terms of synthetic events, okay? So from your point of view, it doesn't change so much. You just guarantee that every time a handler is called because, an, uh, of, uh, because an event has happened, you get an object with uh, all these uh, properties, plus properties depending on the event, okay? And you can use it uh, in your event handler, okay? So first, target points to the source of the event, but actually we will not use it that, that much. We will use... Uh, uh, well, yes, not directly. We will use uh, the value of the target that basically means what is contained inside uh, the uh, element that has been uh, modified, okay? And the name of the target, because sometimes it's useful. If we assign a name attribute to a form control, we can retrieve it easily uh, by this mean, okay? And then there are other um, properties and in particular uh, methods, especially this prevent default, which is useful on some uh, uh, targets, in particular the form and the link, because uh, when you click on a submit button of a form or you click on a link in an anchor tag, a tag, you will uh, ask the browser to reload the page. And you know that we don't want to have the page reloaded because it means to reset the whole application and uh, um, load it again from the server. And so this prevent default will have to be called uh, in uh, event handler that handle um, form submission or that handle uh, clicks on links in short. Okay, and the rest is less important and if it's needed, we will uh, have a look at them when, when needed, okay? So there are a lot of events. We have already seen uh, um, this table, I think. Maybe it was not so complete, but in short, we will use very few events, okay? So on click, uh, on submit, and on change. These are the three really, really important events that we must uh, handle to handle the forms uh, in the React way, okay? And the rest, uh, it depends on the application. If you really need them, you can, uh, you can use them, but, uh, I mean, they're not so really important, okay? Uh, at least uh, uh, at the first stage. How do we define the event handlers? Well, we just define them as a function. You know, we learned how to define a function in JavaScript. Here the rule is exactly the same, okay? So, a function that takes uh, some parameters. If we are not interested in the parameters, we can also uh, simply don't use them, okay? So, we don't write any parameter, and, but here we will not be able to receive the uh, target, okay? That is what is passed uh, through the event object, okay? Uh, but maybe we don't need it, okay? We just need to do, I don't know, console log or whatever just for debugging. We don't need it, okay? And, of course, uh, any way of defining a JavaScript function is okay for the event handlers, okay? So, arrow functions or the normal function expression. Just remember that we shouldn't call the function, okay? 
the function has to be a reference to a function, not a call to a function, because the call to a, uh, of, of the function, if we call the function immediately, this is the result return value of the function, okay? And this is typically not what we want, okay? Also, it cannot be a string. This would be, in a certain sense, valid in normal DOM, okay? So if we program in JavaScript, we can write uh, JavaScript code directly here, but uh, in, in uh, JSX, we cannot, okay? This must be curly brackets with a reference to a function inside it, okay? Just remember, don't call the function, okay? But it should be clear enough and now in the course, okay? So the green ones are valid ways of uh, passing an event handler, okay? And, um, and the red are not. Why? Because they immediately call the function and that is not what we want. Remember that you always have the possibility to define uh, a function on the fly, like here, okay? So the uh, event handler only takes one parameter, but maybe you need to call another function with two or more different parameters. Well, no problem, you just define a function, typically in the form of an arrow function because it's easier to read and it's easier to write here as a single expression. And here you can receive uh, the event object and then call your function, your functions, whatever you would like to do in the way you would like to do it. Okay? So, uh, that is the way in which we handle the um, uh, uh, the call to handlers, okay? Okay, and now uh, the difficult part comes. So, of course, we, we are in forms, so we need to be notified of the fact that the user has done something, okay? So, um, the user has changed something, we have an event, the on change event that we saw before. But then, once we know that the user has changed something, what can we do? Uh, where should we keep the information about what the user is putting into the input fields, for instance? Okay? Well, first of all, let's note this fact. Form elements are inherently stateful, so it means they, they hold a value. If you open a browser and uh, you have a, 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 an input text, you type something, what you type stays there. It doesn't disappear immediately, okay? So there's a state inside the browser and actually inside the control of the form that holds this temporary state, that means what you have been writing inside the, the form, okay? Like in a text form, in selections, and so on. But you learned uh, uh, on Monday, actually we discussed the state and how to handle state in React on Monday, and we say that the state should stay in React components, okay? Not in other places, because we would like to have uh, pure components, and if we need a state, we need to use the useState hook, define a variable, and there we can store the state, okay? And so, how can we match these two conflicting requirements? Uh, well, <laughs> we need to decide where to keep the state, either in the forms, so in the uh, form controls, like the input text and so on, or in the React state, okay? And I anticipate you, we will prefer the second option, okay? Because it's more consistent with the React behavior and so on, okay? Um, so, uh, also note that uh, to correctly render the component from the virtual DOM, React needs to know which value must be set in the form element. So, in short, we write JSX, we write uh, input text uh, something, but if we don't write anything, React doesn't know how to fill up this uh, text form, 
or this uh, input text or whatever it is, okay? Because every time it re-renders the form control, I, it needs to choose what, what value should be put inside the, the control, inside the form and so on, okay? And so we also have this problem. So we need to try to find a solution to this problem. And the solution will be that every time something changes in the form, React must be notified of the fact that something has changed and it will keep this information in a state and then every time it needs to render this element in the, in the browser window from the virtual DOM to the real DOM, it has a value to put inside the uh, form control, okay? So that's the way in which it will work. Okay, uh, we will of course see how it works. Yes. Uh, it's yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that we prefer. We need to. We must to. Okay, because uh, actually. We don't know what uh, these functions are returning. Typically, they are returning undefined, so they are useless to us because what we would like to execute is actually what is executed when we call this, these functions, okay? But we would like to call this function only when the event happens, okay? And not when we define the element in the JSX. That is, uh, when it's called if we write like this, okay? So this is really wrong. I mean, we cannot use it. Okay? It's not just we, we prefer not. I mean, it's wrong. Okay? The other way is instead specify a reference to a function, to a callback if you prefer, that it will be called when the event happens. Okay? And the browser will notify React of the fact that event has happened and React will call our callback, our function. Okay? Okay, this is very important to understand. I mean, uh, I mean, as uh, you, you will, uh, when you experiment in the lab, if you work this way, you will notice that nothing works. So <laughs> it's not difficult to, to catch this kind of bugs, but uh, then you need to know what to do and what is wrong. Okay, yes. Okay, so now we are back to how to handle the state. So this, uh, uh, this handler has been called, something has changed in the form control, and we need to notify React the fact that something has changed, so in short, update the state, and then this state will be used to decide what to show in, uh, in the form control at the next render, okay? So there are two possible approaches. Uh, I wrote preferred here, uh, let's say that for this course, basically, it's uh, almost mandatory. Unless you really, really have a, a good way, a, a good reason not to do this, and you're able to explain it at the exam in a good way, okay? But this, this comes, uh, you know, with the, I mean, the, the, the right option comes with the other subtleties uh, that, you know, that we are not going to discuss. So please try to stick with the left uh, option. Okay, so we are basically only going to use controlled forms. Okay, we will see how uncontrolled forms work just to understand the difference. But we will stay with controlled forms. And controlled forms means that uh, React, the React component that shows the form holds in its state, so in the variable that we define with the use state and so on, it holds the value to be shown in the form element, okay? So we'll keep the value in the form element, okay? And we will uh, always use that value every time we render the component. So we will write a value equal to something in the declaration, JSX declaration of the form component, okay? In some occasion, I would say r very unusual occasions, 
could be useful to keep the value directly in the HTML form element in the DOM, and this is an uncontrolled form component, but it means uh, that we need to do a lot of things uh, to make this stuff work in React, okay? Because basically you have an, a, a state which is outside the control of React. React knows about the state because you call the use state hook that we saw last time. Okay? Otherwise, there's a state which is out of the control of React, and when it changes, React doesn't get notified, doesn't do re-render, and so on. So there are a lot of troubles involved. Okay? Um, I don't want to go into more details here uh, because uh, I don't want to confuse ideas. Okay? So we'll stick with the left uh, solution, okay? which is actually what is depicted here. That's a control the form component. Okay, so in short, we have a React component. Let's call it my form or whatever. We, we will try it with the code uh, uh, just after this slide. Okay, so let's uh, see the theory and then we'll see how it works in practice. So that's a component. Uh, we define a state, const x, set x, use state, and you put uh, uh, your initial content here. So what you would like to have uh, as initial value in your form. So uh, what is displayed initially. Let's say the empty string, for instance. That's a very use, um, to say, uh, common value, okay, for text forms. And then, and then every time something changes, you need to do a set of the state, so a change of the state and change it with the new value of the uh, form control. How, you, how do you get it? Well, you have uh, a parameter that is the event object that has a target property, and in this target there's a dot value property that is available for all form controls because we say that, that React uh, basically flattens this behavior and all controls have a value, okay? And you just set it as uh, the new state, okay? And you remember from last lecture that when you change uh, the value of the state, you uh, 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 require React to re-render the component. And in this case, it will re-render the component that holds uh, this state and which also uh, says how to render the form control, like the input text and so on, okay? And so in the JSX that defines what to render, we should have a value equal to the state, the X, okay? Uh, when we render the component, okay? So in this way, uh, the user creates an uh, uh, event, because it changed something in an in input uh, control. And um, the state of React gets changed. And this state will tell React to re-render. The re-render happens with the new value of the state. So in the end, what has been typed or deleted and so on will appear in, in the DOM. Okay? And so will appear to the user. Okay, but in the meanwhile here, we can also do some computation uh, or, or run some code uh, in which we are interested before updating the state. So potentially we can modify what has been, what has been shown here, okay? And of course, uh, the form element will have value equal to x, but also an event handler change x, which is uh, this function defined here. Uh, attached to the on change event. Okay, this is the synthetic event from React. And so this is what happens. What what happens when we run this controlled uh, form um, with the, with this uh, approach? Okay. So the component, the form component is fully controlled. It means that uh, before changing the visualization according to the user input, we run some code and we store the value in, in the state uh, inside React, okay? And by the way, in the meanwhile, we can also change this value if, we, if needed, okay? So 
let's see in practice how this works. Okay? So that's a form, my form component, uh, which contains a form uh, in which we have uh, an input type text, uh, so a, a box of text, uh, just one line, with a value that is taken from the state. I call it this value name. Okay? And so there's a set name uh, um, function that needs to be called to change the state. And this uh, set name will be called with event target value, as we saw before. Um, uh, uh, where event is the parameter that we receive uh, on the event handler on change of the input type text. Okay, of the box where the user types stuff. Okay, and this event handler is called every time you change the content of this uh, box. So every time you type a new character, every time you delete a character. So every time the content changes in any way. Um, okay. There is also a second event handler. This is just you know for convenience for us to to. You have a, 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 a not too simple example, okay? So uh, we also handle this on submit event, which is uh, um, uh, created when you press on a input type submit button. This is a button, okay? Input type submit is a button. We will see it in the example in a in a minute. When you press on this uh, submit button, the on submit event is uh, uh, created, and so the handle submit uh, function is executed. It also takes an event, okay, as parameter, and here we can do whatever we would like to do, okay. Like in typically in a real application, we will take this uh, data and maybe elaborate a little bit and send it to the server, store in the server, and so on. But also, don't forget that in this case, we need to use this event prevent default, okay? Because this is one of the actions that makes the browser reload the page, okay? The only other action is clicking on a link. The link will be handled the next lecture with the router, client router. Uh, so basically, we will not use links, uh, pure links like uh, the anchor tag. But for the forms, uh, we need to have forms, uh, and so this on submit event is very convenient sometimes, so we need to be able to handle this event. Okay? So, before going to the uncontrolled form components, let's uh, try this example. So, um, this has not been prepared uh, in terms of code, so we rehearse a little bit how to work in this, uh, with this stuff. Okay? So let me just check. Uh, yes, this is the folder aw wix wix08. So let's. Uh, to how can we try an example like the previous one uh, in practice? Okay, just create a new React application. So npm create write at latest example form. Okay, uh, let's make it bigger. You can create as many projects, I mean, um, yes, um, React projects uh, uh, as you like. React, JavaScript, okay? CD example form, npm install, npm run dev, okay? So nothing really special. This is the basic uh, React project, okay? might not be so fast in the beginning, but uh, once you do it, uh, it's fine, okay? npm run dev, okay, let's open the window, okay, that's the usual stuff, okay, nothing new here. Uh, I, I, I did uh, the copy and paste of this code already, just for convenience, because uh, copy and pasting from slides uh, is a bit uh, sometimes uh, inconvenient, okay? And so I should have it uh, here, yes. So let's take this code, okay? 
let's put it uh, into this uh, new React project. So we just delete everything and cut, copy and paste uh, what is on the slides. Okay, so save. And this is what, appear, what, what, what appears. Okay, so let's see what is shown. Okay, so in short, it's just uh, uh, a form. Let me see. Yes, I can make it bigger. Form with the label. Okay, the label doesn't really matter f to us. The input uh, type submit, that's a button. But the input type text, uh, it's a box where we can write something. Okay? So this is exactly this code. I mean, nothing different. Okay? So if you go into the Visual Studio code, that's exactly this code. Okay? Just some important stuff to make uh, things work. Okay? Um, okay, so let's try. So, Enrico. Okay, it works. Okay, well, we already know it, it things uh, should work. <laughs> okay, I mean, uncontrolled forms works uh, well before React was uh, designed and was implemented. Okay, but this is a controlled form. If you look at the components, okay, if you go into my form, you see there's a hook. Unfortunately, I cannot make it bigger. There's a hook, there's a variable that which, which contains the state, and the state is exactly the same that is, uh, uh, I mean, the same string that is written inside the um, input text, okay? If I delete a character, you will see this uh, character will disappear from the state here as well, okay? You see, as, uh, it has disappeared, okay? If I select everything, I delete everything at once, it just gets updated because every time there's a modification in the input text, the on change event uh, is fired, and so the code corresponding to the on change event is executed. So on change, that's the handle change, and the handle change will do set name, even target value, and the name will get this new value, okay? And this new value name will be used as the value to be shown by the next render of the component as the value of the input uh, type text form, um, I mean box, okay? So what happens when you press the submit? We say the, the handle submit is uh, fired and so we will do this console log and then event uh, event prevent default okay let's try that's uh, uh, wa that's the name of well, the abbreviation of the course name okay and then let's press submit well nothing happens actually but yeah something has happened okay Something has, has, uh, was printed on the console, okay? So actually this uh, handler is uh, executed and this code has been executed, okay? What happens if I comment uh, this prevent default? Let's observe what happens, okay? I just click submit. You'll see that the page has reloaded. That is the behavior that we don't want to have, okay? So this behavior is not acceptable at the exam. You will lose points if we notice this behavior, okay? Why? Because we are designing single page application. We don't want the, the application reload. Because when the application reloads, you lose all the state of the application. All the variables that contains the state in your hooks are, res are reset. So everything is loaded from the server again, okay? So that's not the way in which uh, we would like our application to work. Uh, okay, so let's uh, go back and, you know, leave this prevent default, save. Um, just to show you, uh, in the event handler where uh, I get a new value of the form. I can do whatever I like, okay? So let's say I would like to have uh, 
um, everything. Um, no, re let let me just do a check uh, of the length, for instance. Const uh, uh, val equal event target uh, value. Okay, if uh, val length is greater than I don't know five, uh, just uh, mm, let's say val equal to I don't know error. Okay, and set name val. Okay, this is just an example. I mean. Uh, val const uh, yes should be let of course we are changing it okay so const is five for starting but then you you change your mind okay so that's a start from from scratch okay so uh, let's see what what is happening here in terms of the state well, let me type uh, my name and rick o okay I type the O and the error appears, okay? Why? Because this is a controlled form. So what happens inside the form depends on what I write in the code and what I put into the state in the React state, okay? So this is a fully controlled form, okay? The user, of course, has the impression of typing and the you know, the, the, what, what you type uh, appears in the box, okay? But it's not exactly like this. It's because when you, when you type something, you change the content of the form, and then you decide with your code what you should show, which typically is what has been typed, because you know, that's the usual behavior of the forms. But let's say you would like to limit the length of the content. You would like to type stuff and only have uh, uppercase uh, letters. When you type, you would like to have uppercase letters uh, uh, regardless of, of uh, the, the case in which you typed uh, your string. You can do it, uh, all these things, uh, at this point, okay? Just uh, writing suitable code, okay? You need to... No, check a little bit uh, what you should write. I mean, uh, uh, let's see if I can do. Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, val should be a string, so uppercase. I don't remember. I mean, we should. I, I didn't prepare this example, so MDN uppercase. Okay, two uppercase. Okay. So, it should be a string, let me see if it works. To uppercase. Case. Okay. Let me see if this works. Otherwise we'll modify it. Uh, yes. I'm typing with the lower case. Okay. I'm typing with the uppercase. I'm typing numbers. Okay. This appears uppercase, regardless of what I'm typing, okay? Because again, this is a controlled, fully controlled form. The code decides what appears inside the form, okay? Because we have value equal to name here, okay? And we cannot forget this, uh, this attribute, otherwise, uh, no, uh, what is shown depends on what reactor decides to show, okay, we, which is not known, okay? Typically, it will leave the previous state, but I mean, um, we decide what to show in terms of the state that we updated every time something has changed in our form, okay? So let me commit this example, so you have it, and we can go on, okay? So... Yeah, I hope everything is uh, from example form. Yes, and just this stuff doesn't matter. Yes, commit so example form in uh, during that. 
actually. Okay, so in the meanwhile, you, you know how to use, I mean, you understand a little bit how to use uh, uh, the GitHub from, uh, from Visual Studio Code, just in case. Okay? Okay. So you'll get this stuff here. Okay? In the examples. Lecture examples, week 08. And now you have this example, okay? The example form. S source up. You can keep, a, 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 you know, a, a, a test project like this and just copy and paste a little bit of things that you see on the slides inside the app JSX just to try some code, okay? That's the easiest way, okay? Without creating a new project from scratch every time. Okay, fine. So... Uh, so we understood how this stuff works, okay? And also, what's the advantage? So in the meanwhile, when uh, when when you get the event that something has changed, you can also modify uh, what you, you would like to show to the user, okay? As we did with the uppercase and so on. Okay, the other option would be this one. But as you see, will not be described uh, in details and will not be used, okay? And you should not use it, okay? Unfortunately, this is a basic uh, uh, web application and React course, okay? If we, uh, if we add uh, 12 credits, we could, uh, you know, deal with these things as well, but uh, I mean, we should stick to simplest important things with a special focus on security when it's needed, okay? So in short, in the React component, in this case, there would be no state, and basically, we do nothing. So we don't have value equal to something because we don't have the state. The state is inside the DOM, inside the component. Well, actually, not the component, the element in the DOM. It's managed by the browser. And so, uh, and so uh, it becomes difficult to handle all this stuff. We should uh, have... Uh, an event that says that we finished, like the submit event. And at that point, uh, we should go and uh, in some ways uh, read the values of the uh, input control that we need and use them, okay? But of course, it's a very different thing because we don't have this uh, information as state in React, okay? So it still works. Sometimes you might need it, but not in this course, okay? And the only, uh, the, only, the only time at which you would need something like this is when you really need to have a functionality of a form which is only implemented in the DOM and not in React, okay? It's not mapped in React, and so you need, really need to access the actual form element in the DOM. But this is not the case for our course. So forget about this. I know it's sim it would be simpler, okay? But it gives you also much less control on what is happening. In the other case, you have the option to do whatever you want when something changes. And also, you already have the values available in the state, which is also convenient. Okay, so we are almost uh, done with the forms and then we will again try to modify our example, the complex one, the list of the answers, uh, introduced in the forms, okay? So, some tips. Uh, the unsubmit event is generated, is generated by the form element. Note that you can, can have also m more than one form element in your application, okay? If you have more forms uh, shown at the same time. Uh, each one can have its own unsubmit event, and this event is generated when you press the submit button. So a special type of button, input type submit, okay? Or a button of a bootstrap in which you specify that is a submit button, okay? In this case, you should always call event prevent default to avoid the submission, and in particular, the reloading of the page. Since you didn't specify a URL, you don't submit uh, the information to any place. Okay, that's fine. But you would like to, you need to 
uh, prevent the reloading of the application because it resets your application. It's like if you close and reopen a normal application, you lose the state. Okay? And then it's also useful to have this on submit event because in this place we can perform the validation of all form data before proceeding. And how we do it? Well, we check the content of the state variables. There will be one state for each form control, like for each input text and for each uh, selection and so on. You check everything is coherent, is fine with you, so it reflects uh, the, the allowed state for your application, and then you proceed with using this data. Okay? Fine. You can also use validator. This, those validator that you, you saw on the server side, you can also import them on the client side and use them on this part, in this part, okay? They are basically functions, so it would be just a, a different way of calling the functions, but uh, basically they are exactly the same, okay? So you can use uh, the same library as well. Uh, sometimes it is tedious, so it's boring, to use a controller that form components. We know, but I mean, um, you will not uh, have to design so many forms in our applications, uh, especially including the exam, okay? So you'll practice a little bit. There will be some places where we need to input information. So for sure, a form or two will be present, but I mean, we are not uh, creating very, very big applications. But it might be the case, and in this uh, situation, Probably it's better to rely on some libraries uh, that, you know, creates a controlled force uh, for you. Because it's tedious, because it means uh, write input type text with the value with a certain state and declare the state with the use state and declare the handle that basically only changes the content according what, to what is the value of the control and so on. So it's very mechanical process. Maybe today the co-pilot and all this stuff can help you, <laughs> it might be, okay? But, I mean, you can also use libraries uh, that are designed to help you in this, uh, for this case. We are not going to go into more details about this because uh, we don't have time, first and second. Uh, I mean, there are not so many faults in this uh, course and uh, it's probably to uh, it's probably important to understand uh, um, uh, how controlled forms work by writing two or three forms uh, in your code manually by yourself, okay? And so instead of writing, instead of calling the function of a library, we are not really sure what the library is doing and so on, okay? But of course, if things get bigger, of course, uh, there will be, there, always, there will always be a better solution than writing things by hand. Typically, if it's a common problem, there's a library that helps you, you know, to develop things. Okay, so let's try to code a little bit, okay? Because today it will take a bit some, some, some time, I mean, to develop things. Not as easy as last time where basically we moved the list of answers in a, in a state uh, and in short we finished, okay? So, um, I already published uh, um, an example, so which is actually what we did last time. So the React to Q, uh, QA state. So now this React to QA forms, more or less. Okay, and so we will work in another directory just for convenience. You could have committed on the same place, but then uh, it's a uh, uh, less uh, useful for you to find things uh, if you're not uh, very familiar with the GitHub, okay? So every time we do something new, we create a new folder and we start from the uh, old one, okay? So this is just a copy of the old uh, uh, React QA state uh, which we developed uh, on Monday, okay? And next week we will do the same and so on, okay? Next uh, uh, Thursday. So let's go back uh, to the uh, Visual Studio Code, okay? And first of all, let's run the, uh, what, what I've made available, okay? So we stop the other uh, project from running. We go into the 
React QA forms. Uh, npm install, I think, uh, yes, I already did it. So basically this, this operation did nothing at the moment, just checked everything is fine. npm run dev, and let's see what happens. Okay, so we close the other window. And this is uh, the project uh, that we saw on Monday, just in the interest of time. I just added a form uh, below the list, okay? That's the only modification I did, because it, otherwise it takes a, a while to, to write the form, okay? But let's have a look at this uh, form. So I put this stuff in the form component file. Oops, no, this is... Um, yeah, okay, fine. So in short, this is a form, okay? And uh, I used the, the form provided by Bootstrap. Why? Again, uh, this is not mandatory, but it's, uh, it's suggested because, uh, I mean, it gives you a reasonable style and uh, a reasonable behavior for uh, the forms that you are using, okay? Um, so you see that uh, more or less it appears uh, like the rest, okay? Well, the previous one was a really basic uh, a, a form with the, you know, the d browser's default style, okay? Almost, because there was some CSS, but yeah, almost default style, okay? So here, uh, I have a form which has four fields which have different types. One is a date. You see, you can select a date, okay? Two other fields are text. So the text that the answer, text, and the respondent name. And then there's a score which is a, which is a numeric field, okay? Okay, which is not working yet. You see, I can type stuff, of course. No, I cannot type, yeah. I cannot type because probably I already set a value, yes. If you set a fixed value, it becomes a controlled form. So unless you update the status, the state, sorry, the state, every time you have an unchanged event, nothing happens, right? So that's why it doesn't work, okay? So it seems not to work. In, in, in practice, it's working as expected, okay? Because the code now is not handling the on-change event, okay? So these are the four elements that you see on the page, this uh, form group with the label and the control, okay? And the control, one is type date, the other is type text, text and type number, okay? You have the corresponding controls in HTML5. So input type date, input type text, input type number, and so on. Okay, so nothing new. Just need to adapt uh, to the uh, attributes that are available in Bootstrap, uh, uh, actually React Bootstrap, if you would like to use React Bootstrap. Okay? And then we have two buttons. Well, we already saw buttons. No, one button is type submit. So that's the button that, when pressed, generates an on-submit event. Um, and another button, uh, variant warning, so it's yellow, and it has an on-click handler, which at the moment is undefined, okay? Because I would like to program the behavior with you, okay? Okay, good. So as you... Uh, could see before, uh, we only uh, use uh, uh, controlled forms, okay? So we are four fields, and so we will need to have four states. How do you define a state? Const, name of the variable, set, name of the variable, equal, use state, and an initial value, okay? So let's pick the easiest one. Text, sec text, use state, empty string. Okay? 
and this text will be used as a value text in the corresponding component, okay? Respondent, set respondent, that's the same. Score, set score, that's the same. Since it's a number, it is probably better to uh, initialize it uh, with a number, okay? So you don't get confused. The computer never gets confused, but you can easily get confused, okay? So don't leave it empty. Empty means undefined, okay? Because uh, the use state expect a parameter. If you don't set it, the use state will get undefined, okay? Which is a valid JavaScript value, but it will not render as you expect, maybe. And then the date. Well, here with the date, uh, you first, you need to understand how the control works. Uh, and in practice, you need to search a little bit about, uh, on the internet, in the, in the manual pages, in the, uh, in the documentation, and so on. What does the control type date expect? And you will discover that it expects a string. Okay? But we have date.js, uh, date.js, and we can uh, convert uh, date.js object into strings uh, and vice versa easily. So just initialize the state uh, with uh, a string with this format, which is the one expected by the form control. And uh, this is just today's date. Let's check it. Uh, yeah, that's today. It's just in English format, right? Uh, month, day, year. Okay, and by the way, the nice thing of using this uh, um, this uh, control of type date, uh, it saves you from developing all this stuff. It's already available in some ways through Bootstrap, through the browser. Actually, you don't care that much. The important thing is it's available, and you change the value, and now, of course, it will not work because, again, it's a controlled form, but we'll make it work. Okay, as a first step. Okay, good. So, let's make the controlled form works. Works in terms of uh, at least they show what we uh, put as an input. Okay, let's start from the simplest one, the text. Okay, so we need to have an unchanged uh, event handler. Okay. And of course, you cannot re just return undefined. Of course, it will not work, okay? But uh, we will return uh, something that makes sense, okay? Uh, actually, we can, uh, I mean, it's not enough that we return something because, I mean, the on chain doesn't care about the return value of the event handler. Is that the event handler should set our state as we did in the example, right? So in the example, you see, we did set of the state. So that's what we should do. So let's go back to the code. And so here we do set text. And then what? How we get, how do we get uh, the value that is currently uh, available in the DOM? So what the user has changed has changed um, we need uh, the event uh, parameter okay otherwise it will become difficult to get it okay uh, and so get event as a parameter and that's why it is passed uh, to each event handler because having the handler to the object that contains the information about the event, it's very useful because here we can write event, target, and then value, okay? Save. And that's all, okay? Because of course the state was already there. So the state is here. And let's see if, the, if it works. So let's go to the text. This time it works, right? If I tried before, it didn't work. And you can also check everything is working fine with your 
um, uh, with your uh, uh, React debugger. It, uh, there's a form. Uh, you just need to pick up the form, con the correct form control. You'll see the d d d d d. No, it's not here. The state is not for in the form control. It's in the form component, right? No. Where, where did I put it? Answer form. Okay. Form is the is the one that you know is returned. Okay. The answer form. So state here, and that's the string that we typed. If as before, if we change something, it, it gets updated because every time the on change event is fired, then we change the state. Okay. So let's do the same thing for the rest of the form controls. Okay. So the respondent is exactly the same. Event um, set uh, respondent, right? Well, actually, we had a, a function, right? No. And the respondent is something different here. I mean, we can write them here or uh, make a function, doesn't matter. Respondent uh, event uh, target uh, value. Okay? Nothing to invent here. That's why it's boring. And that's why you have the libraries, you know, in case you need to create a lot of forms. Let's see if things work. Yes. Okay? Yes, there's a question. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's not actually a loop. I mean, yeah, it's a loop in the sense that React gets involved and makes a, a render again of our view. But for each character, for each character exactly. Exactly. That's what, yeah, sorry. Yes, we are waiting for the user to, to uh, create this event by typing something or deleting something. Okay, and when uh, an event like this is generated, uh, the callback is called, and the callback sets a state, and the state tells React that it should re-render, and the interface should be updated with a new character, with a new content actually of the of the field. Okay. Because the new content could be different, as we saw before. We could make uh, uppercase and stuff like that. Okay? So every time there's a non-change event, all this stuff happens. Okay? So only this state is updated with a slightly delay because it's a debug uh, um, system, debugging system. Okay? But you see that when I type, I can type quite fast. I mean, React is quite efficient in doing these things. Okay? It's just, you know, this uh, uh, debug tool, which is a bit slower. Okay? But you're right. Every time you change something, there's this, uh, I, I wouldn't call it loop in the sense that it stops. Okay? So it doesn't uh, loop many times. But there's a, there's a um, you do a turn. <laughs> I mean, uh, you, you go to the event handler, you set the state, you go to React, and React uh, does a, uh, redraw of the interface, updating what has changed. Okay, good. And then, uh, and then you should do exactly the same for the rest. Okay. Let's uh, change a little bit. Okay. Let's say that with the score, the score is a number. We uh, define the function handle score. Okay, which actually doesn't. No, maybe I already wrote it. No. Okay. Function handle score as before, okay? Event, oops, event uh, set the score, uh, okay? Uh, event uh, target uh, value, okay? Let's see if it works. 
now it works. Actually, just be careful. Uh, you see that here, I mean, it's, it's small, but uh, that's a string, okay? So just be careful. We started with a number in the initial state, zero, and we ended up with a string. Just be coherent, okay? You would like to keep a string in the state? That's fine. You would like to keep a number? It means that every time you get the value, the value is a string, it has to be converted into a number. Parse int, okay? Save. Let's see if things uh, work. Four, okay? You see, no more quotes because it's a number, okay? That's up to you. You need to be careful about, uh, you know, be coherent with the, uh, the type of the values that you use. But just for you, I mean, the computer doesn't get confused. It's just you, okay? And you, then you also know in JavaScript there's automatic type conversion, so if you keep a number as a string and when you would like to do comparison, maybe it works. Maybe not, depends if the automatic conversion happens correctly or not. No, you remember that numbers get converted into a string and vice versa, depends on what, what is happening. Okay, I mean, at the moment we don't care. Uh, let's leave it uh, like this, let's keep the number, which is the, let's say, most intuitive uh, thing. Hmm? And then, uh, we still have a field, right, the set date. I told you the set, the date, Type date only handle a string. So in short, every time we get a date, uh, we need to uh, set a string. But this is not a problem. I mean, if it's already a string, and we just need to set a string, we just need to set a string. I mean, as we, did for, as we do for the last, the other, uh, um, the other uh, uh, event handler. So set the date, event, uh, um, target uh, value, okay? Save, let's see if it works. Let's go back, let's go to the date, let's change the date, now it works, okay? And you see, the value is a string. You have the double quotes, they're in the state and it's a string, fine, okay? Just remember that when you will need to use the date for doing operations, you will need to convert it into a DayJS object and then do the operations, okay? To take advantage of the library, of course. Okay. So, let's do one last thing and then we will continue after the break. Um, at the moment, uh, the application is not so nice, right? So. Uh, these applications are never nice, <laughs> but I mean, it's really ugly. I mean, it's a list and then there's a form below and nothing works, uh, neither the cancel nor the add. And, uh, you know, uh, we could, why, why should we have a list and have uh, a form directly below the list? Uh, I mean, without uh, the possibility to remove the form in case we just would like to see the list, I mean, how can we uh, make the form appear or disappear depending on the fact that we do like to add something or not? I mean, in short, I, I open the application, I would like to see the list, and only if I would like to add something, I would like to show this form. So it would be better to have a button like add or plus as the button that you have in the lab, and when you press the plus, you open the form and you show the form, okay? How can we hide the form first? Well, let's go back to the app. There will be a place where we put the form. So in the, I don't remember, uh, answer form. Yeah, I put it here, okay? So, let's say, uh, Let's show it, uh, well, of course I can comment it, but I don't like just to comment it, okay? Uh, let's introduce something that helps me 
you know, to show it or not, depending on some, some condition. What's a condition for a React application? Well, a condition is actually a state, okay? So are we in the state in which we would like to show the form, or are we in the state in which we don't want to show the form, okay? So mm, in, this, uh, in this application, this could be a very uh, easy choice. I mean, there are just two states, show or not show, no show, okay? So just a Boolean variable is fine, okay? So let's try to introduce it. Where should we put this variable? Well, let's try to, to put it here. I mean, we already have the answers. Let's create another state, okay? With hooks, it's very easy because uh, we can create as many hooks, as many state hooks as we want. I mean, call any state hooks as we want. Const, what's the name? Show form. Okay, show form, show form, set show form, use state. Uh, in the beginning, we would like not to show the form, right? Okay, show form, and we go here, and we see, we put uh, um, uh, show form, okay? And uh, let's see what happens. Well, oh, yeah. This is a conditional expression. It needs to have a, a third value. Uh, we can, for the moment, let's put null. Null. Okay? Now the form has disappeared, but we are missing something, right? We need to hit the button to show the form. Okay? So let's say that uh, either we show the form or we show a button, button, uh, add, okay? That's a text uh, that we would like to show. And if we click on the button, on click, we change the state of the form. Set, show form, true, okay? Answer form, we either render answer form or a button with the text add. Okay? You see now we got the button add. Let's press the button and we got the form. And then we should go back and press cancel <laughs> and make the form disappear. But this requires that this button sets the state. Uh, of the um, variable show form as false, okay? But this button, unfortunately, is, oops, it's in, uh, in another component, right? So it's in, inside the answer form, okay? So you, we should uh, uh, rearrange uh, a little bit the uh, things uh, so that uh, we can, uh, let's say, uh, Pass uh, something, well, we, we, can, we can pass it and then break, okay? Do the break. Close form, okay? We create an attribute. We pass uh, a function as an attribute, okay? And uh, simply we pass uh, un a function like uh, uh, this set sh show form uh, false, okay? And so let's put this stuff at new line. Okay, and uh, in the answer form, no, actually, yes, the answer form, we will get uh, a close form that will be put here, right? Props, close form. It should work, hopefully, yes. Okay, so we have a new state in, where did I put it, in the, was it in main, I think. Yes, the second state, false, okay, in this state, if I press on the button, 
becomes true and it shows the form. If I press on the cancel, it becomes uh, false and it hides the form. Notice that I didn't write any code to decide, you know, how to handle the DOM. Everything is managed by React. That's the purpose of having React, okay? Handling everything through components, props, and state, okay? Just changing the state is enough to tell React, re-render what is needed, so change the appearance of my uh, application, okay? So let's break. Uh, in the meanwhile, I'll, I'll commit it on GitHub so you have the code. And if you have any question, of course, feel free to ask. <laughs>